the aliens coming down? How much of all that do you subscribe to in the Egyptian thing? I wasn't I actually believe. born here. <laughs> I definitely believe in, in aliens, and I find it absolutely fascinating, the whole pyramid phenomenon that's across the world. I mean, even in China, where there, it's covered with soil and grass. And it just there's just certain things throughout history that just make me, you know, yeah. Yeah. I definitely, having visited Egypt, um, you go there and you just go, this is insane. The technology is so advanced. And funny enough, Cliff and I were talking about this the other night, and I said they've got on some of the um, temples and things, there are hieroglyphics of that they are helicopters. That absolutely is a helicopter. And, you know, I don't know, but, yeah, I, I, I th I, I mean, I'm a sort of reluctant believer, but I definitely think there's something out there. Right. A hundred percent. There are just so many corners of this universe, this whole thing that we know as creation, that we, as mere specks don't understand there's got to be something else out there whether it's green skin with one eye i don't know but um i'm willing to bet that it's going to be something that we encounter sooner rather than later and they fly helicopters <laughs> or or they hitch a ride on asteroids <laughs> <laughs> all right we've got some questions here we're going to go straight to you guys first question over here all right, first thing I'd like to do is just, um, when you were here 13 years ago, uh, Peter, um, I asked a tough question that you guys couldn't answer, and uh, you were, as a result, you, um, you gave me a little discount on my photo. I would just like to say, you thank, say once more, thank you very much for that. But do I have an answer now? <laughs> oh, I do, I do. Uh, the, what I, will, what I will, just before you go on, I'll just say that you say 13, I've had a couple of 15s. Some people say it's 15 Might be 15. Years. Might be 15. I think it was 15 because 97, that makes it 17. <laughs> Might have been a different one. <laughs> Boy, it's not. It's I, not 97. I know you were here I with... I think it was 99. I'm going to settle on 99. That's okay. the average. I know you were here with uh, Tyrrell Rothery and Don, the late Don S. Davis. That's the soul. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, my uh, question is, and if it's all right with the staff, I'd like to shake your hands while you're answering it. Um, it's, uh, do you guys have any em embarrassing moments from the behind the scenes that you could share with us? If I couldn't answer that then, what makes you think I'm going to answer it now? <laughs> <laughs> Embarrassing. Well, um, I will just tell you that um, uh, while you negotiate with the organizers, I will just tell you that uh, my costume was pretty difficult to get in and out of at cer in certain of its incarnations. And uh, there was a fellow who, whose primary job on set was to dress a popis and undress a popis. <laughs> And that fellow enjoyed his job a little too much for my liking. <laughs> so on occasion, it was embarrassing, but he turned out to be such a nice guy, I just let him do what he wanted. <laughs> and you know, times have changed. That's no longer embarrassing. It's merely an anecdote. <laughs> he did love the boys, though. He did, yes. Oh, he dressed you too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and undressed me. <laughs> Cliffy was actually decided to do that job, he just did it anyway. I had, um, one of the funny things was when I, they couldn't decide if they wanted to use my real hair, which was very, very red at the time, or to wig me, or to go with a kind of black wig, for like sort of a la Cleopatra. And I went through lots of makeup tests and all sorts of things, and then finally on my very first day when they decided for the wig, I sort of had half my face done, because they were testing the makeup, and the other half not done, and it's now, you know, 6 a.m., no one really is their best at 6 a.m. And no wig on, so my hair and pin curlers with that sort of stocking on it, in a robe and a dressing gown, at the craft service table, shoving a bagel into my mouth, and I feel a tap on the shoulder, and it's like, hey, I'm Rick. And I went, I'm Hannah I am not the elephant man, I am an actor. She's so good at that. It was horrendous. I've had a lot of embarrassing practice. Um, yeah, so that was kind of embarrassing.
I just have a story. I've actually told it maybe here earlier, but it was embarrassing for someone else. We were doing a scene uh, where I'm uh, attacking Amanda and Rick comes in and he's trying to, you know, save her and I've already kind of, my Jaffa have been downed and, you know, we've got Zat Point and we suddenly hear <laughs> and it's one of the Jaffa and of course we, we're, we try to continue for a little while but it's just because they've been lying there. Of course, it takes a lot longer to film these things than it is on screen. So someone got a little relaxed. And then so we start a new take. And it was only when I was in Chicago at Creation last month that I realized which Jaffa that was. And it was Dan Payne. <laughs> who went on, who graduated from Jaffa status. Yes. Um, Chris Judge always tells a funny story about, I don't know what season, you, you, you'll probably be able to tell me, but when he said he was so tired that in one of the scenes he was just sleeping and then one of the producers came and said, were you sleeping? Oh my God, that is so disrespectful. Were you sleeping through that take? And he's like, no. <laughs> I was meditating. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, before we go any further on the embarrassing thing, I would just like to caution Cliff about how he holds that microphone because it appears to be... Hey, that's... What, what, what's wrong with a whale? <laughs> All right, that's my most embarrassing moment I've had. Uh, no, I, I didn't really ever get embarrassed. Ball doesn't get embarrassed. But He's one, got no, balls. He's got big balls. He doesn't get about it. The one, ep the one, I don't remember the episode, we were in the jungle with a force field and they arrived and I was like, wait. Um, Tilt gave me a power bar to chew because I hadn't eaten for a while. And uh, I was chewing that and then he, he came up behind me and he grabbed me in the take. And the power bar just went flying straight out. <laughs> it was fantastic and I wish they'd kept it, but we, the problem is we actually ruined the shot because we, uh, both Chris and I just packed up laughing. We actually couldn't shoot that scene. It was just, it was so natural and fantastic, but they never kept it in. It just went flying, like right, it was great. So that was kind of a funny moment. It wasn't really embarrassing, but it kind of was because, you know, you got the whole crew watching you and all that kind of stuff. So. I also remember, it finally occurred to me one day when I was uh, doing, uh, it was Metamorphosis. So I, I was wearing that particularly revealing costume with the keyhole cutout that was for a very large key, I think. <laughs> And I, I had this habit, and I, I know I'm not alone. I'm not the only actress who does this. You can see yourself in the camera lens. So I was using the camera lens as my mirror before we shot, and I realized I was kind of arranging myself. And then I looked over at Video Village, which is where we call the, you know, the playback screens, and I realized that everyone was paying very close attention. <laughs> occurred to me, oh, the feed is still, you know, it's not just when the camera's live, and so I stopped doing that. It was... But it's the first clip on the blooper reel. Or booper reel. Booper reel. Booper reel. Dude, you've got value for your answers yeah. here. Yeah, they're sitting watching those screens, and even upstairs, like if, if you're on set, up, upstairs in the production offices, the screens are on, and you're standing in front of the camera, and you're like, doing all this kind of stuff. It's, Actors in the it's kind of like when habitat. you... Yes. Also, what you forget, when you're on set, you're mic'd. Your microphone, oh And you're no. like, I, I just got to run to my trailer. I got to go to the, to the toilet, you know? <laughs> and you forget you're mic'd. And you eventually, after learning, you, you eventually learn, okay, got to switch the mic off, you know, switch it off. And then you go to the toilet because often you just hear this is great. Well, you mentioned... <laughs> yeah. You mentioned Don S. Davis, and that, that reminds me of something he said. He came up with this, and I, I'm not sure if it was his, but his delivery made it, made it his in my book. He said, well, I'm just going to drop the kids off at the pool. <laughs> Being the gentleman that he was. Being the gentleman that he was. He's a lovely man. I actually had a sound guy remind me that my mic was still on because I was doing some preparation. You're dropping preparation. the kids off no, at the pool? No. I was doing some preparation before coming in. I was kind of getting myself worked up and saying some very rude things. Mm. And he came, he came up and he said, your, your mic is live. And I'm like nodding. I'm totally somewhere else. And I just keep doing it. <laughs> 
Okay, next la, question. La, la, ma, 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 ni, ni. Um, uh, this is probably a question that you've all been asked a great many times before. But could each of you, in your most gold voice, I'm not sure if we have a flanging unit back in the sound desk, um, but could you, in your most gold voice, say your favourite line from any episode? Okay, I'll go first. <laughs> if someone can assure me that Richard Dean Anderson is not in the room. <laughs> My favorite line is without a doubt, a line I delivered to him, to Colonel O'Neill, on the set of the Knox in the rainforest. <laughs> Fool, I will kill you. We must give to you and give you praise. <laughs> Bring the other one. Oh no, this is a shot. <laughs> yes, Goa'ulds are very affectionate. Very good household pets. <laughs> yeah, but they never let us do a sex scene. <laughs> so one anyway. Or was it just off the top of your head? Oh. Now them's fighting words. Them's fighting words. <laughs> <laughs> may your death last days and you, no, may your life la last days and your death hours. There we go. There we go. <laughs> Finally got that. Somebody, somebody reminded me of that one. That if, was if actually blinked, very good. Missed. If you blinked, you missed it. <laughs> My best was when he came in on his knees. Remember that? It was fantastic. Because we couldn't see you. I was like waiting, and like we couldn't see you at all. And then they parted, and you know. <laughs> all right. I struck it from my. It was mind. great. Hi, it's a really quick question for Peter. I was I was talking to you at a cocktail party last night. You mentioned that you like golden kiwi fruit. Is that true? That I what? Sorry. You like golden kiwi fruit. Yes, it? I do. I got some for Girl, you. Girl, thank you very oh. much. Did I mention at the cocktail party I like champagne? Thank you very much. <laughs> Have you guys ever had these? Yeah. The golden ones. Yeah, they're amazing. Oh. Match your costume. Looks like a box of balls. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause for Amanda with the coffee. <laughs> Thank you, darling. Oh. Thank you, darling. <laughs> All right, we have another question here. Yes. Nice hey, guys. Hi. I just want to ask, what did you do to get into your characters? What preparation did you do? Wow. What do I have to do to get into her character? <laughs> I think you've already been there. Uh -huh. I mean, it is, oh, not in real life. <laughs> you walked right into that one. You'd think I'd remember. <laughs> I meant in Egyptian mythology. I think we're, oh, yes. aren't we supposed to be, I don't know, we're father and daughter, mother and son, husband and wife. It's very complicated. We're let's, a difficult family. We're like the royals. Let's go with that. Let's, go with, let's that. go with that. <laughs> um, um, you know, honestly, getting into the hair and makeup and wardrobe was really like descending into the character. It was a very long process, a couple of hours, you know, with the makeup and then for me, at least at the beginning, the hand painting of the Mendy on the hands and getting into the costume. And by the time you you get all that gear, you're just ready to get on stage and start bossing people around. <laughs> I, 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 ball was, I am ball, it was just me. I didn't do anything. I put his boots on and yeah. <laughs> but you had to tell the lovely story at your audition where everyone was kind of like all silly and you were the opposite. That's quite nice. Well, are you trying to make me talk a little bit more than... <laughs> I haven't heard this story. No, I it's just, it's a nice story. story. I'd like to hear that. Oh, but that's a little bit off the question. 
Well, no, I, because I think sometimes in your oh. prep uh, with, with, with roles, okay, so, very yeah. often you prep the, at the audition, yeah. and they, that's what gets you the job. So when you're then on the set, you take that slightly further, yeah. and that's why, that's why it ties so in. It's, so the first episode, I think it was Summit, um, when they had all the new system lords sitting in a, in a circle, I, I kind of walked in, I didn't really, I didn't know anyone, I didn't know any of the other actors in the show, and we hadn't really spoken, and um, I kind of saw everyone's trying to be bad, you know, and I always play the bad guy, so, but this was a whole new thing, I'd never done sci-fi, and they're all being bad, and they're all sitting like, mm, waiting, and, and I kind of looked at all of this, and so I slowly just sunk a little bit lower in my throne that I was sitting in, and then Osiris walked in, and I was like, hmm. And I did that, and I smiled, and I looked her up and down, and all the other guys were like, you know? And I thought, that's, that was the character. He just, he just arrived, and I was like, okay, this is the character. He's gonna be a human. He's not gonna be an alien, and I'm gonna play him like that, and just let the dialogue make him bad. You don't have, to, the best way to play a bad guy is not to play bad. And I've always said, like, the, the best or the worst bad people on this earth, serial killers, whatever, they're very charming people. That's how they get their victims. So that's how I went with Baal. I made him. I wanted him to be charming and funny because that's how you get people to relax and then you're like, whack. Yeah, so that was my kind of development. So the first two or three episodes, uh, that's, I got into it that way. Mm -hmm. All right, another question here. Hello. Um if my memory serves me correct, there's an episode where you and all your clones, if I'm correct, 12 of them, are all the 22. Ah. <laughs> my mistake. Um, they're all the sitting at a big, long table, and I'm guessing that the, you're the, doing individual scenes. Yes, right. yes, I was doing all of them. So, so they would do a take, and then I would move to the next position. And then at that one stage, the episode you're talking about, where we were all killed, all the clones were actually dead on the table, so I, I had to lie like that, and then I had to lie like that, and make each one different. And then when we were all transported back into my ship, I had to, I was just standing, and they would do the take, and then I would move, and I would do the take, you know. And that's all I did. That's like and, the <laughs> Stargate, the one-man show. Yeah. <laughs> Don't come here. What do you mean? Indeed. Ah, ah, woo, ah. Exactly, exactly. But you know what? I'm upset about that because... Wait, 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 wait. I think oh, sorry, this, sorry. Sorry. So sorry. See, this answered my question. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> cool. So, yes, I played all of them. Every no, single one. My question was, how awkward was it, like, talking to yourself and going to... It was yourself? very, very difficult. I, I'd done green screen work before, but not to that extent. Um, when I was talking to myself, I had to remember, there were marks on the floor, like in the smaller room when there was five of us with Amanda, and we were trying to get the codes of the computer and everything. Um, I remembered where I was standing, and obviously my height is the same, so I had to look uh, directly at myself when I was talking or looking at myself, otherwise you can see with eye lines on camera, 